Thank you very much for coming here to help share our celebration of the 70th birthday of the NHS and you're one of the few people that were there at its very beginning. Very beginning, yes. Because you were at Cross Houses mm. in 1948. Yeah. It had opened as a hospital in 26, 1926 mm. yeah. uh, for the poor and paying guests, oh. uh, patients. And um, so it had been run very much by the uh, the doctor in charge and the matron. They decided everything. We've just been into the current switchboard and we were yeah. hearing how they take nearly one and a half million calls That's a year right. and 5,000 emergency calls. Yes. And you were saying that when you were on the switchboard, it was how many external lines? I had two outside lines and three, uh, 25 extensions. Gosh. But of course, as, t as t years went on, more and more, yeah. Um, outside lines were added, and, uh, and, and these and were the old switchboards that you plugged in. Well, a... We used to call the doll's eye one. Oh, right. The original switchboards, I would think, one of the original. You had plugs. You plugged in. The doll's eyes dropped, and you plugged in the put a plug in. Gosh. And there were two plugs. And you had to put the other plug where they wanted to speak to. But of course, by the time he left, I left, it was uh, computerised. But you were saying you were sometimes given the, the, the contact details if the doctor in charge was out socialising yes, and had to yes. track them down. I had to ring him uh, if he was out, went out for a meal even. Gosh. And tell him he was wanted back at the hospital. Did he always come back? Always. Oh, right. Oh. He's a marvellous doctor. He yes. Oh. Well, he was, he was a gynaecologist and surgeon. So it was really a one-man show? Yes, yeah. Yeah. And he, um, he's, he was always studying. Uh, his, one of his sons came to see me not too long ago and said, I'm Geoffrey, do you remember me? And uh, he said we used to come and play on the switchboard. Oh, really? Said, yes. <laughs> My friend and I, who retired at the same time, used to go to the archives and uh, we read the minutes of the Poor Law Committee meetings. Wow. From 1792 to 1936, Gosh. and uh, we picked out little snippets that we thought were relevant or funny, even. and the things that went on in those days wouldn't go on today. No. I mean, the, the uh, committee started off by saying it was decided mm. that. Um, John Jones should volunteer to go on the uh, <laughs> HMS so and so. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So it was a completely different world. Absolutely. Really, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things perhaps people aren't aware of is that we've got a really rich heritage of healthcare. By 1926, I think, when uh, it started to be that the poor could get treatment. Yeah. But it wasn't until 48 that yeah. everything was free. Can you remember what was the sense at the time? What did people think about the idea of free healthcare? I think they just accepted it because they'd gone through two world wars, hadn't they? Yeah. And, and um, so change was inevitable to them. Mm. And they just carried on with, with life as it happened. Do you think people could have imagined what the NHS would grow into, what it is today? I'm sure nobody realised how it would outgrow itself, really. Mm. In 1948, I thought it was amazing when Mr. Burke asked, had the man brought a piece of finger that he'd chopped off? Because then, in 1948, you didn't hear about people it's sewing reattaching. limbs back yeah. and fingers back. And yes. So Shropshire was ahead of its time even then for Edith? Yes, yeah. he, he was a very clever man. Yes, yes. Yes, he was. And very well respected. I enjoyed my job. I mean, you think staying in the same job from 48 to 95 would be boring. It wasn't ever boring. Mm. It, because it changed so much. Mm.